Hello, my name is Sabrianne Penner and welcome to this video presentation on caregiver burnout. This session will give you some insight on what this is, why it happens, and what we can do to help manage it. So first I'd like to acknowledge that the main office of the Atlantic Kidney Foundation is located on the ancestral homelands of the Beotuk, whose culture has been erased, on the island of Uktahungook, also known as Newfoundland, the unceded and traditional territory of the Beotuk and Mi'kmaq peoples. I am personally facilitating this session from Enetekopukwek, or Enfield, in Mi'kmaq, also known as Nova Scotia. We acknowledge that we've benefited from the colonization of these regions, and we strive for respectful relationships with the past, present, and future stewards of this land. Some of the topics we'll be covering in this session include kidney health and chronic kidney disease, what caregiver burnout is, causes of that burnout, some signs and symptoms to look out for, how burnout affects us and the people around us, what we can do to manage it, and some helpful resources to help you in managing it. Let's start with some background on kidney health and chronic kidney disease. Our kidneys are very important to our health. When they're in good health, they filter waste from our bloodstream and return clean blood to our bodies. They also help regulate our levels of water, salts, acids, and various minerals, and they produce hormones that also keep us in good health. Chronic kidney disease, or CKD, is an umbrella term which contains many conditions which damage kidneys or cause reduced function for three months or more. People can be born with CKD, or it can develop as a result of other diseases like diabetes, high blood pressure, and heart disease. In CKD, the filtering units of the kidneys are attacked, and that reduces their function and in some cases can lead to kidney failure or end-stage kidney disease, or ESKD. Some of the main causes of ESKD are diabetes, polycystic kidney disease, urinary tract obstructions, and recurrent kidney stones. Some of the symptoms of CKD include puffy eyes, hands, and feet, bloody, cloudy, or tea-colored urine, excessive foaming of the urine, frequent urination during the night, less frequent urination or difficulty urinating, fatigue, and persistent generalized itching. Not everyone with CKD will develop ESKD. Some ways to prevent or slow down CKD include controlling high blood pressure, controlling blood sugar if you have diabetes, maintaining a healthy weight, not smoking, engaging in movement, eating a nutritious diet, and taking medications as prescribed. So now that we've talked a bit about kidney health and kidney disease, let's switch gears and talk about caregiver burnout and what that looks like for someone who's caring for someone with kidney disease. Caregiver burnout happens when someone in a caregiver role feels emotionally exhausted after having too many demands placed on their energy, strength, or resources. This also happens when the caregiver isn't taking enough care of themselves, and this can happen when they don't have the time to care for themselves. Uh, they may not have the capacity or the energy to do so, or they might even feel guilty taking care of themselves when they're caring for someone else. It's really important to know that almost every caregiver experiences burnout at some point. It's very common and you're definitely not alone. So what are the different causes of burnout? First of all, there are lots of emotional demands. Caregiving takes a lot of physical and emotional care. And in some circumstances, there's no way to make the person you're caring for well. There's no way to cure them. And that can be emotionally exhausting to care for someone who might never get better. We might also experience conflicting demands. There's conflicting needs between the care receiver, the caregiver themselves, spouses, children, employers, family members. Trying to meet everyone's various needs can absolutely cause burnout. 
we can also experience an ambiguity of roles. Sometimes we don't know exactly what our roles are and what we're supposed to do when caregiving. This can happen with a new diagnosis that we're not as familiar with, or if we've never been in a caregiving role, or maybe we're caring for someone who was previously caring for us and just that shift in roles can lead to burnout too. Of course, workload, having too much on your plate from dialysis appointments to doctor's appointments, medication routines, all of that on top of our existing responsibilities as a parent or spouse or employee, all of our daily responsibilities, that can all add up and be very stressful to manage. We might also experience conflicting policies between professional and family caregivers, and that can affect the kinds of services that we're receiving or not receiving. We might expect one type of service and we might get another type, and just that conflict can cause us stress too. And finally, a lack of privacy. We might have limited time to ourselves because there's lots of people coming in and out of our home to help with caregiving, which is wonderful, but it can also take its toll because our home might no longer feel like our home. Now, each of these things might be worsened by and contribute to something we call the social determinants of mental health and the multi-dimensions of poverty. So there are three social determinants of mental health and our experiences with these indicate our ability to thrive within our environments. So the first is access to economic resources. This might be affected by caregiving because some of our income might go into buying medication or assistive devices or hiring a professional caregiver, which can affect our ability to afford basic needs like housing and food. Second, our social inclusion and our relationships and communities can be affected. You know, the dynamics and roles within our families may have shifted. We might have less time to spend with our friends and in our communities, which can make us feel disconnected in our social relationships. Finally, we might even experience discrimination and violence as a result of our caregiving situation. Caregiving can also contribute to different dimensions of poverty. So as an example, like I mentioned, we might experience material poverty because we've had to put some of our income into caregiving, or we might even need to reduce our hours at work or stop working altogether just to keep up with the demands, which can affect our level of income, therefore affecting what types of resources we're able to access. We might also experience opportunity poverty, which means we have less time for things. The demands of caregiving take up more of our time and energy, so we have less time to dedicate to the things we enjoy or in nurturing our relationships. And this in turn can affect relational poverty, which means that we're lacking in strong supportive relationships. So next we'll talk about some signs and symptoms of caregiver burnout that you can look out for, which can help you identify it early and try to manage it. So some of the physical symptoms include exhaustion, a lack of energy, physical aches and pains, headaches, changes in appetite, whether that be eating too much or too little, a lack of sleep, and changes in weight. And this is by no means an exhaustive list. You can uh, find more information at healthline.com. Some of the emotional symptoms include feeling a lack of mastery in the air of caregiving, um, a lack of autonomy, and a lack in our ability to achieve our goals. We may also feel anxious, depressed, we may isolate ourselves from others, we may feel very irritable, and we might have no interest or motivation to engage in the things we usually enjoy. So how does caregiver burnout affect us? Well, caregiver burnout doesn't just affect us. It also affects the people around us, whether it be our friends, our family, or even the people that we care for. Experiencing burnout may lead to sleep deprivation, 
personal health problems and lowered self-esteem, caregivers may also turn to substances in order to cope. And each of these affects a person's ability to provide good care, and it might, in extreme cases, result in neglect or abuse of the care receiver. So what can we do here? There are plenty of ways in which we can manage and even prevent caregiver burnout. The first one, the big one, self-care, not just the romantic kind. You know, bubble baths and candles are really nice, but self-care is about more than just doing things that relax you or that you enjoy. It's really about taking care of your needs and asking yourself, what do I need in this moment? Sometimes it is a bath and that's great. Sometimes it's doing the dishes to clear the clutter from the sink. Sometimes it's sitting down and watching Netflix. Sometimes it's getting outside and getting some movement. Sometimes it's even running errands and listening to your favorite podcast while you're in the car. Because we know too, as a caregiver, it can be really hard to find the time to take care of yourself. So really trying to fit it in wherever it makes the most sense for you. Next, we can ask for help. This could be other members of your family or friends or even a support group just to help you out. And then we can also delegate if that's available to you. Really delegating some of your tasks, clear your workload. We can also consider using respite services even for just a few hours just to give you some time to take care of your other priorities and knowing that the person you're caring for is still in good hands. And then we've got working on ourselves. And this one kind of goes back to self-care and asking for help. And it just has to do with identifying what you need to stay healthy. This might be finding a therapist or a counselor to help you with the stresses of caregiving or going to appointments and just keeping up with your, your own health. So next we have a few resources you may find helpful in managing caregiver burnout. So we've got a few different resources here. The first one is the Atlantic Kidney Foundation itself. Uh, they can connect you to local peer support groups by calling them at 1-866-390-7337. You can also get in touch with your local Kidney Foundation branch or visit kidney.ca to fill out a peer support request form. The foundation also offers a free online program called Kidney Connect in both English and French, where members of the kidney community can connect with each other, share resources, offer support, that kind of thing. And then there's Wellness Together Canada, and this is a great website where you can find lots of different kinds of mental health resources. And then of course, 211, They've got plenty of information going from mental health supports, like counseling and therapy, um, all the way to housing and food support, and then everything in between there too. Thank you for choosing this video. We hope you found the information helpful in your caregiving journey. Feel free to reach out with any questions at the information provided here.